Hi guys, I'm Tom PB and welcome to episode 8 in our series of V tutorials in partnership with Vidorats in Parajet. In this episode we're going to discuss the manual and dual start versions of the master engine, the differences between the two engines, how to use them correctly and other things you should watch out for. So first let's cover the obvious points. A manual start engine refers to the pull start and the sense that you manually start the engine yourself. A dual start engine refers to the engine having an electric start function which can be started using the hand controller and also having a secondary pull start function the same as the existing manual version. So one of the commonly asked questions and something you may be asking yourself what is the difference in weight between a manual start and a dual start version of the engine? The answer a manual start version of the engine has a weight of 14.3 kilograms and a dual start version of the engine has a weight of 15.6, so a total difference of 1.3 kilograms. Now, you also need to take into consideration that depending on the battery type used and the electrics installed, this could add an additional half a kilo to a kilo of additional weight. So therefore, in total, you're looking at approximately 2 kilograms of additional weight when you have a dual start version of the engine installed in your parameter. Secondly, you'll also notice an e-box, which is used for isolating the power on and off for safety. You'll notice a battery, which is used for powering the system. And of course, you'll have a starter button function on your hand throttle control. So one of the other things we need to cover are the differences between starting the manual start and dual start version of the engine. So if we recap on episode three in this tutorial series, you'll remember that we covered how to correctly and safely start your manual start engine. So, in this case, the throttle is in my right-hand side. I'm going to place my hand behind my head and locate the pull start handle. Now, the Vitarazzi pull start has a mechanism within it to assist you to pull the engine. So what we need to do is pull gently outwards, release, pull gently outwards again, release, and here, suddenly, you'll find a tension in the line. There's a nice biting point at the line. And then one stern pull, release, the engine is now started. When starting the dual start version of the engine, this procedure is similar in many ways. Okay, so now that we've had a quick recap on the manual start function of the engine, let's walk you through the electric start function of the engine. Now the control for the electric start function will be integrated into your hand control. And depending on the style of hand control that you have, the start button may be at the top here, at the bottom here, or in some examples, maybe a two button technique, in which case both buttons need to be pressed together at the same time. In the case of the Vitarazzi throttle we have here, the starting function is a single button placed at the bottom here. So as with all starting techniques, ensuring that we're in a clear area with at least 10 meters between ourselves, between any objects, and we're in a safe control position, take the brace position, clear prop, and we're going to press the button. The engine is now started. As this is an electric start engine, it uses a battery which powers the starter motor which engages the engine. And like all components of your engine, it's important to be mindful of them and take good care of them to ensure their longevity and the ongoing health of your engine. Now if the engine is cold and you're starting the engine for the first time, being mindful of the components Always ensure you only use the electric start function for a maximum of four seconds at each interval, as this will ensure the longevity of the starter motor and prolong the battery life. As with the manual start procedure, simply stop and repeat until the engine engages. So now some important safety advice. Because you have the ability to start the engine using the button on your hand control, it's important to ensure that should you ever remove the parameter, you immediately turn off the isolator switch on your e-box, as this ensures the engine is safe and prevents the possibility of starting on the ground. So another useful piece of advice, depending on the type and style of battery used in your parameter, and whether the battery is fully or partially charged, a circumstance could occur where there's not sufficient charge in the battery to power the starter motor and engage the engine. If this happens, don't panic, you have a dual start engine and by its very definition you have an alternative method of starting the engine which is the manual start procedure. One key element of owning a dual start engine is to always ensure the battery has a full charge before every use as this ensures the long life of your battery but also importantly the long life of your starter motor. Depending on your parameter setup and configuration 
it may be necessary to either remove the battery and charge it with the use of a trickle charger, or alternatively, in the case of the Maverick, we have a convenient system for charging, which connects power outlet directly to e-box, removing the necessity for removing the battery. For removing the battery, in the case of the Maverick, the simplest and easiest way is to release the harness buckles at the top of the frame and allow the harness to drop down, giving you clear and easy access to the panel and the battery behind it. Remove the individual grub screws, gently remove the panel, remove the battery to reveal the positive and negative terminals. Remove the terminal cover, revealing the small bolt below. Then, using a socket wrench, simply release the tension before removing the bolt and removing the terminal. Simply repeat this process with the negative terminal. When refitting the battery, always ensuring that red matches positive and black matches negative, take your terminal connector and the small bolt, tighten until sufficiently tight before replacing the cover. Now that you've reconnected your battery, simply replace it in the cavity, ensuring it has a nice tight fit and none of the cables are catching or chafing. Then replace the outer panel and tighten both of the individual screws to ensure it remains tight and safe. Now that the battery has been reinstalled and the outer plate mounted, simply reattach your harness buckles to the top of the frame. As with all elements of your engine, it's always important to ensure that you regularly inspect and maintain the battery and the electrics to ensure everything's in good working order. So, key things to watch out for are, your battery is always fully charged before every use, the terminals are clean and free of any corrosion, the terminals are also in good condition and not showing any signs of wear. And finally, all wiring is not strained, showing no signs of pinching and no signs of excessive wear. So guys, thanks again for joining us in tutorial eight. This is actually the last in our series of e-tutorials and we hope you found them all useful and they've given you a greater understanding of how to safely use and maintain your engines. But please don't ever hesitate to contact us directly or alternatively your local Viterazzi dealership if you require any additional information or if you have any other questions. Take care.